Well, praise be to God. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I welcome you once again for another session. Since we are at home and uh, we have a lot of time, we might as well redeem the time that God says. We've, we've just concluded our series on Psalm 91, uh, God's promises of protection. Uh, today, I'd like for us to be able to start a new series. It's, I call it Faith for Our Times. Faith for our times and the reason I believe uh, I received that kind of uh, uh, title or, or from the Lord I was I was praying and asking the Lord what I would call this and that seemed to be the natural thing that came to me and I believe God is looking for 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 his people to exercise faith for our times we are being assaulted by fear uh, by sense of un by a sense of uncertainty and what God wants us to see is that He's never abandoned us. God has never forsaken us. God has never uh, uh, left the job thinking it was too hard. He's still here. He's still there with you. He's still fulfilling what He's told us to do. And He wants us to receive what He has promised. And we receive things by faith from the Lord our God. So today, okay, I'd like for us to uh, talk about it pleases God. Faith basically pleases the Lord our God. Let me just read from Luke chapter 8, verse 22 to 25. Now it happened on a certain day that he got into a boat with his disciples, and he said to them, Let us cross over to the other side of the lake. And they launched out. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And a windstorm came down on the lake, and they were filling with water, and they were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we are perishing. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was a calm. But he said to them, Where is your faith? And they were afraid and marveled, saying one to another, Who can this be? For he commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Okay? Uh, right now, basically, I believe what God is wanting us to understand is the Lord expects faith from us even during stormy times, okay? We have periods where everything are calm. We have periods where everything's to be working uh, according to our expectations. But there are the turbulent times. There are the stormy times, like the times that we are in right now. Uh, many of us want to go to work. Many of us want to be able to put our talents, our skills, our time uh, into service of a company or somebody else. But it's not that we don't want to. It's not because that we are too lazy to do this. But it's simply that we cannot at this moment simply because of the quarantine and the restrictions that we have. And for some, this has caused other kinds of problems like uh, uh, making the needed in income, getting certain debts paid and things like that so we have all of these problems and yet we have a God who is taking care of us and we would like to be able to receive what he has the thing is sometimes we can become nervous we can become worried about the, uh, what concerning the things that are happening but I'd like for us to see here that God wants us to be uh, in faith uh, in, a, in an attitude of faith even when things are not working out according to our expectations. In this particular passage of Scripture, you know, the Lord said to them, let's go on a boat, let's go to the other side, and, you know, they, they went, everything was uh, smooth, and he even fell asleep, and in the middle of that, something happened, okay? Suddenly, there was a storm that arose, and it's, it was not just a little kind of a storm, it was a big one, that it says here, according to the Holy Scriptures, their boats were filling with water. I'm sure they're trying to get the water out of the boat. But it was filling with water faster than what they were taking out. And the scripture says they were in jeopardy. So in other words, their fear was not just psychological. There was a real danger that they would sink. And so it says here, they went to the Lord and said, Master, Master, we are perishing. So he woke up. He rebuked the wind and the raging of the water. And everything became calm again. And you would think that after that, Jesus Christ would commend them and say, Good work, guys. I'm glad you woke me up. 
I'm glad you told me what's going on. Cause I'm the only one who can do this. Okay, I'm glad you were. You had the presence of mind to wake me up and not to panic. But that's not what the Lord said, according to the Holy Scriptures. Instead, He asked them, "Where is your faith?" Okay, it was sort of a rebuke. I mean, think about it. He was asking them, "Where is your faith?" When it was apparent, at least for me and for some others, that if there was a time that it would be inexcusable to be scared, it would be excusable rather to be scared and to panic, it would be at a time when there's a storm and your boat is filling up and you're getting ready to sink, I would think the Lord would be more understandable. But that's not what he, he, he said to them. He said, where is your faith? Okay? Despite the fact they were in the middle of the storm, Despite the fact they were in real danger, despite the fact that they were troubled by all of these things. The Gospel of Mark tells us it's the same story, okay? And uh, he, he says to us in Mark chapter 4, verse 40, But he said to them, Why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Well, at least Luke was still gentle. Where is your faith? Okay? But Mark tells them very clearly, You have no faith. Because you are afraid. See, when fear is operating in us, fear basically is faith in reverse. You have more faith that the problem has the ability to destroy you, rather having faith in the God who has the ability to save you, deliver you, preserve you. Okay? So it tells that the faith was not there. They were acting in fear. Considering the circumstances, you would think, like I said, you would think the Lord would understand. But we need to understand this particular truth. The presence of troubles, they do not negate the faithfulness of God. Just because things are dark does not mean the sun is not shining. Just because problems are getting complicated does not mean that God is not doing His job. Just because things are getting quite hairy does not mean God doesn't care anymore. God will always remain faithful. God will always remain God. God will always be God to us. And so God expects us that despite the fact that things are not working out according to our expectations, that we will choose to trust Him in this particular situation. It's when things are not working out right that faith becomes really vital that when faith is faith it's easy to say thank you lord that you supply my needs when you really have no lack thank you lord that you heal me when you're not sick but it's when those problems begin to hit you and you have no other basis except the faithfulness of god that when that and, and you have faith in him that's when faith is faith see without faith there's no way for us to please God. Let me just read from Hebrews 11, verse 6. But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Impossible to please Him. Simply no way to please Him without faith. So we cannot do away with faith. For he who comes to God must believe that He is and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. See, faith pleases God. If uh, uh, without faith... And we cannot please God, and it means that faith is what pleases the Lord our God. When we choose to believe God, despite the fact that things doesn't look like God still cares, God is pleased with that. We choose to believe Him above all other things. And He says, faith believes that He is. What does that mean? That He exists. And because God exists, that means He's God over the situation. Okay? We're in our homes right now. We want to work. We can't work. We don't have an income, and we need to make some uh, some finances right now. And, you know, we can get worried, we can get troubled, okay? We can get irritable, or we can say, well, I, 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 I know how it looks like not right now, but I will put my faith and my trust in God. I will not be worried. I will not be stressed out. I will put my faith and trust in the Lord our God. And... Faith believes that God rewards our seeking Him, even if sometimes it looks like we're wasting our time. That's what he says, right? He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. Uh, it took, uh, from the time God gave Abraham a promise that he would be a father of many nations, 
uh, it seemed like uh, he was getting older and older and it seemed like there was not even a sign that something was taking place but in the midst of all that according to the Holy Scriptures even if it looks like nothing was going on Abraham chose to believe God Abraham chose to have faith in God and the Bible says and God uh, uh, considered him righteous because of that so faith believes that God rewards our seeking him faith believes that you know we've been reading the Bible we've been quoting the scriptures we have been praying we've been confessing his word over our situation faith believes that there is a, a reward that's coming even if it seems like nothing seems to be happening okay see <clears throat> Uh, we, we, we need to understand also that uh, faith allows the Lord to work in you uh, in Mark chapter 9 or Matthew chapter 9 verse 28 to 30 it says here and when he came into the and when he had come into the house the blind man came to him and Jesus said to them do you believe that I'm able to do this they said to him yes Lord then he touched their eyes saying according to your faith let it be to you and their eyes were open and jesus sternly warned them saying see that no one knows it now they know what jesus christ said he didn't say according to my father's desire let it be done to you it was his father's desire to heal them according to my compassion let it be done to you he was compassionate he was moved to meet the needs of the people he was moved to meet the needs of the suffering but that's not what he said. He says, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. If you believe this, then this will take place in your life. See, that's kind of crucial there because faith allows the, word, the Lord to work in you. Also, faith allows us to experience the Lord's abilities in our lives. Uh, Jesus said uh, in John chapter 11, verse 39 to 40. Well, let me just set it up. Uh, Jesus Christ came four days after Lazarus died and he saw the sisters Martha and Mary they were crying and uh, Jesus Christ told Martha move the stone away and Martha said well it's been four days it's kind of stinky right now uh, it's been dead for four days Lord I mean dead is dead but Jesus said take away the stone Martha the sister of him who was dead said to him Lord by this time there is a stench for he has been dead four days Jesus said to her did I not say to you that if you would believe you would see the glory of God in other words Martha was saying what what for <laughs> he's dead I mean if you had come when he was just dying maybe he could have been revived if you had come a few hours after he died maybe he could have revived but it's been four days his body starts decomposing it's stinky and what's the point point? and Jesus Christ said to Martha did I not say to you that if you would believe if you would choose to have faith in the words I'm saying that you would see the glory of God in other words to see is also to experience in our lives it's one thing to read about them it's another thing to actually experience them in our lives Yes, God wants us to read about His promises. Yes, God wants us to hear about what He has done for other people. But God also wants us to experience what we've been reading about and what we have been hearing about. And it takes faith to do that. Okay? As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ said, Faith makes all things possible. In Mark 9, 23, while He was ministering to the man uh, whose son was being thrown down, He said to him, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Okay? If you can believe, that's what he was requiring. He didn't say, if you have a theology degree. He didn't say, if you have an IQ of 110. He didn't say, if you memorize one half of the Holy Scriptures. No, he says, if you can believe. If you can believe, then all things are possible to him who believes. And the idea there is not just believing in anything, but rather believing in Him, that He's able to do for us what He has promised us. Okay? And if, if faith can do that for us, well, what can a lack of faith do? Well, 
In Mark chapter 6, verse 4 to 6, it tells us that it kind of hinders the power of God in our lives. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Now he could not do any mighty work there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people, people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. Then he went about the villages in a circuit teaching. I think no. He could not do any mighty work there. He wanted the crippled to walk. He wanted the blind to see. Okay? But he could not do any mighty work there in his own hometown because the people had doubts and unbelief concerning him. Okay? Uh, he was able to do some things. He was able to heal a few sick people. But he wanted to do more than that. And he couldn't do it. But, and it says here, he was astonished. He marveled at one, at their unbelief. So, a lack of faith can hinder the working of the power of God in our lives. That's why God is pleased when we have faith in Him. And He wants us to have faith in Him. Therefore, as we come to the conclusion of our session today, let me just urge you to choose faith over fear. Let me just urge you to choose to believe that God is able to help you even during this time. God is able to bring the resources to you even during this time. God is pleased by our faith in Him. When we choose to believe in Him, even if it looks like everything is lost. With God, nothing is lost. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up His countenance upon you and grant you peace. Amen. Thank you for joining us. I'll see you again next session in faith for our time.